Hello, welcome to episode 4 of the Modern Game Tutorial series. Today we are going to be covering collisions. So this is a bigger topic, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Where we left off in the last tutorial is we had this little scene set up with a player and three enemies, and we move them around and they all move around. I'm going to revert it back to where only the player is moving around, just so we can have some collisions going on here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that if the player, uh, the player's wrecked overlaps with one of their wrecks, then we delete it. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, let's go ahead and go to our update here. And whenever we loop in the sprites, we basically want to check if the player is intersecting or overlapping with one of the sprites. How are we going to do that? Well, there are a ton of different approaches. I'm going to actually separate our player. We usually want specific access to our player. Uh, because our player has so many different variables to it. So I'm going to actually create a player object here. And I'm going to separate this out. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take this out of this, out of our sprites that add. I'm going to say player equals this. And then I'm going to add it to here. Now what we can do is when we loop over the sprites, we can say if and then um, sprite dot rect. And then what we can say is we have a ton of different things if we do this dot here for this rect. We have all these different things. We could say inter intersects, we could say contains, all this sort of stuff. Contains usually means we contain the rect. We only want to check for an intersection. We just want to see if the recs have any sort of intersection with each other. So I'm going to say intersects, and then we're going to check um, the rectangle value. So we want to see if the sprite intersects our player. So I'm going to do player.rect here. And then if it does, we want to kill the sprite. How do we do that? We will remove it from the list, but be careful. We're using a for each loop here and we can't remove things from a for each loop within the for each loop. So what we could do is we can create a, an empty list of sprites and we could call this something like kill lists uh, just equals a new list. And then we can just do um, kill list dot add the sprites. And then we can just loop over all the sprites and kill lists. And we could say sprites dot remove the sprites. Okay, so let's run it and let's see what happens. As you can see, the player is completely missing. And the reason the player is missing is because the player is also in the sprites list. So what it's doing is it's it's saying, well, is the player's rect in intersecting with the player's rect? And if it's going to always evaluate as yes, so it's going to remove the player. Now there's a couple ways that we could counter this. One thing is we could say that if sprite does not equal player and sprite direct dot intersects here, this is one very, very simple approach. So we can go to here. Now we have our player. We move around. We hit this this uh, character here, it deletes. We hit this one, it deletes. We hit this one, it deletes. Uh, perfectly fine. Uh, or we could separate it into two groups. So we could completely omit player from our sprites list. So just get rid of it here. Then we no longer have to do this here. But now the problem becomes that when we run this, the player is no longer drawn. So we have to go back to our update and draw. And we have to individually specifically update our player. So we'd have to do a um, player dot update here, pass in the game time. And then we'd have to do a player dot draw here and pass in the sprite batch. And this would also work perfectly fine. The only problem is, as you can see, the more things you do with the sprite, the more duplicate code you're gonna have just because you pulled player out. So typically there are Typically, you don't really want to just have your player standalone like this. You want to sort of be able to group it in. Uh, but of course, it's completely up to you and it's completely up to the situation as well of whether you deem it necessary to pull your player out of the sprite list. Okay, so now that we have that working, let's get some cool collisions going on. Let's get the player colliding and stopping whenever they hit um, one of the sprites. This requires a bit of different collision. So with 2D um, collision with simple rectangles, the basic approach is to adjust one axis at a time. And the reason is because if you move both axes, the X and the Y, at the same time and then check for collisions, and let's say you hit a corner of a rect, how does it know which side to put you on? You move them at the same time. So it'll just like pick a random one and it'll, all of a sudden you'll be teleporting. It looks really, really awkward. So to counter this, what most 2D games do is they move everything on the x-axis or the y-axis first, then they check for collisions, then they move them on the other axes, the x or the y, and then they check for collisions again. Which means that you have two uh, checks for collisions, but it looks a million billion times better. 
and it's also more accurate. So we have to implement that here. There are two main ways to get actual physical collisions with the player. One is to provide the uh, sprites whenever you create the player and have the player keep track of when sprites are created and deleted. The other one is to simply um, pass in the sprite list as an argument to the player's update method. And there are pros and cons of both. I typically prefer the first one, but I'm going to show the other one because it's a little simpler when starting out. So we have our update here and we want to be able to pass the list of sprites here. So uh, sprites, and I'm just going to say uh, collision group. But now you see there's an error here. And the reason is because we're overriding a method, um, but we don't have a method that reaches these arguments. So what we would instead have to do is we would have to um, create a specific method for player that would check for this for these collisions, which is a little weird, but we can do a public avoid update. And this one's going to also take game time, game time. And it will take in a list of sprites and it will take so collision group here. And then what we would do is we would just move all of this over to there and just not use this overrided one. Now, of course, this would mean that we would have to, again, pull out the player from the sprites here um, and do it individually. So we can just do player.update and this would take in the game time as well as the sprites. And then we would just do the player.draw here as before with the sprite batch. But that's the only adjustment we need to make. So now what we can do is we can move the X's, then check for collisions, and then move the Y's and check for collisions. So I've separated this out from moving X and moving Y. I'm gonna move the X's first and then check for collisions. Okay, so now to check for collisions. So I'm gonna do a little for each loop here and I'm gonna do var sprite and collision group. And now we're just going to do the exact same thing. So if sprite.rect.rect intersects and then it's going to be our own rect since we're inside of a uh, player we don't actually say player.rect we just say our own rect then what we will do is we will need to actually keep track of whatever we adjusted here and so this is a little weird it's a little bit weird but what we can do is um, we can say basically um, float change x equals zero and then we can say uh, change x plus equals five and then change x minus equals five and then after this we do um rect dot or uh, not rect position dot x plus equals change x here so now we have to basically reverse what we did before and so the way we do that is we just say that our uh, position dot x minus equals the change x and so before we get into the y let's make sure that the x is working so i'm going to run this all right and let's see if we collide and we have some collision here that's a little bit inaccurate um and the reason is because of just like the um there is a little bit of space in my pixel art actually it's not actually the rec being inaccurate it's that there's a gap in my pixel art but yeah our, our horizontal collision is working i'm pressing left right now and it is not going anywhere Let's get the top one working now because that is not how it, that is not working. So let's go ahead and do it. Exact same process. Okay, float change y equals zero. And then we would just change this to change y and this to change y. And then just do the exact same thing here. So for each here, if they collide, then position dot y minus equals change y. Amazing stuff. Very, very simple. We press run. Okay, and now, and now, whoops, we have to actually increase y by this change y. Completely missed that. Now we run it, and we should be able to move around, and as soon as we collide here, we're perfectly fine, and we collide here, and we're perfectly fine. As you can see, there's no gap in my pixel art on this one, so they do collide nicely. So it's not just inaccuracies, it is that. Awesome. But now I don't want you, I don't want to leave you on a loose end where you have to individually call player.draw and individually call player.update and have to pass in your sprites like this. There is a way to counter this. I'm going to take all this and I'm going to um, basically control X and control V here. Now, of course, our collision group is going to blow up in our face. I'm going to get rid of that, that new method we made for that temporary purpose. And I'm going to create a list of sprites. Um, and it's going to be collision group. And I'm, I'm going to pass in the collision group here. So it's going to be a list of sprites and it's going to be our collision group. And then of course, now we actually have to use our constructor to say, this dot collision group equals collision group. Now we don't get this complaint and we can pass it in here. So we can do um, our collision group here of sprites. And now we can just say player dot update without passing in our sprites and we can do all that stuff. 
and we could reintegrate player here with all this stuff, but you get the idea. So now we're passing it in the constructor. So now we basically have this and we can move around and we can hit things and stuff and we can collide and it's all fine and dandy. And if we wanted to, we could also add the player. So sprites.add player. Then we can remove this individual update here and this individual draw here, make it cleaning up the code a bit. All we have to do is we have to have one more check, which is just uh, sprite is not equal. And then it has to be this because we are inside of it. This basically meaning us. So if the sprite is not us, then, you know, so sprite does not equal this. Then it all works as intended. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Now, the awesome thing is that the awesome thing is that you can even do actions on this list after you um, inject the list into your constructor of your player and it will reflect that in your player's um, collision test. So in English, I can do sprites dot remove a sprite down here. So I'm going to just basically pull out one of these and assign it a value. So sprite sprite equals this and then add the sprite there and then remove the sprite later. So I'm basically passing the sprites list here and I'm removing something after it. And even though I'm removing it after I have um, after I have passed it to the constructor, it still reflects that in our construct in, in our uh, sprite class, which is pretty awesome. So don't worry about like having, you know, um, inaccuracies when you pass it in the constructor, it will update it like this perfectly awesome. And of course, this does work with um, with like gravity and stuff. I can't go crazy on physics right now because this will be a crazy tutorial. Um, but basically, the way you would do gravity is you would just say like change y plus equals five, and then you would say um, if if key is up, then change y would minus equal like ten or something, and that would be your solution. So you would just always have this thing falling, and then you would press up, and you have this gravity here, and then it lands, and you can see we have some cool stuff. And you would use similar things to how we to what we did in the user input tutorial, where we restricted it so that you have to have a certain condition before you can press a button to jump. And that's how you would have proper gravity setup. But there you go. That's pretty much simple collisions with Monogame. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully it made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to join my Discord. I'll be answering a ton there. And if you'd like to support, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can keep on making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.